Hey everyone, Mr. Anderson here, and today we're talking about section 5.3.1 in our CPM ebook, and we're going to be really kind of revisiting sequences and looking at how different things are changing. Um, it's probably going to be a pretty good move to have this open because there's a couple um, e tools that are provided to us. Um, from Desmos. Thanks a lot, Desmos, uh, for helping us out with that. Um, but some of these e-tools are going to be pretty gosh darn helpful in how we proceed and how we're going to go ahead and do some looking at some of these sequences and these patterns, right? Um, <clears throat> and I read here as we get started with uh, 5-82, it says, so far in this chapter, you've looked at several types of sequences and compared linear and exponential growth patterns um, in situations, tables, and graphs. In this lesson, we're going to compare the patterns of growth rates to each other, right? Like a little compare and contrast type deal. Uh, this work will also help you write the equations for exponential sequences in the next lesson. This is something we haven't seen yet, so it's a spot we're growing to, right? So we've got three sequences, sequence A, B, and C. Sequence A looks like this, sequence B looks like this, sequence C looks like this. And what I notice is I've got the first four terms of each sequence. I notice that they all start in different spots. Sequence A starts at 27, sequence B starts at 9, sequence C starts at 6, and they all grow differently to different spots. The fourth term here is 108, the fourth term here is 144, the fourth term here is 48. In just a second, we're going to go ahead and we're going to check out what all of these things look like graphically. And we're going to do that using the E tool, right? So if you're logged into your CPM ebook, you can see it there using the 5 82 E tool. <clears throat> and then what we want to do is we want to talk about some things, right? We want to talk about or consider keeping these things in mind. How do the inputs and outputs change, right? How are they increasing? How are they growing? And um, is the rate of change constant or does it change every time? And I'll show you how we can figure that out. And then if we know a term, is the next term predictable? That is, if we know one term, how could we find the next term? And they give us an example, like if you know the 10th, could you find the 11th? So we'll investigate that. And then finally, and this might be the hardest one, so we have to do a little bit of remembering back from where we came, um, and that is which family of functions is the best description of each of these um, types of sequences. Okay, so what I did is I made some notes here and my notes um, are uh, available here on my iPad. And I'm going to share with you that when I really looked at sequence A, I found that, yeah, we started with 27, but we were growing by 27 each time. Okay, piece of cake, right? Um, and that says to me, right, that this sequence, um, because we're adding a constant, right? It's not changing, it's constant. We're adding 27 each time. This is an arithmetic sequence, okay? We're just adding a, the same number every single time. There is a constant difference term to term, okay? Arithmetic sequence. And as we've already seen in um, 5.2 and even 5.1, this is going to have a bit of a linear format, okay? And that's that's an important thing to remember, okay? Um, the next thing, I'm actually going to go all the way over here to sequence C. And in sequence C, I notice, I notice in sequence C that um, we're multiplying to get from term to term. For example, 6 times 2 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, 24 times 2 is 48. And that says to me that this sequence is geometric, okay? Now, I'm gonna go a little further with this geometric sequence because, and I'm just gonna make a little, little itty bitty note here in darker purple on the inside of my, my sequence table because, yeah, I'm multiplying by um, two every single time, but the growth, because I'm growing by six here and I'm growing by 12 here, and I'm growing by 48, you could even say that I'm adding something to itself, which by definition is doubling, right? My growth is changing every single time, right? My growth rate is even, you might even say it's speeding up, right? Initially when I started, I was only growing by six, and then that growth shifted to growing by 12, and then by 24, it's accelerating, right? 
V, the, in sequence A, we saw that that was constant. In sequence C, we see that it's accelerating. This is not going to have that constant rate of growth, right? We've seen this thing graphically. We've seen what that curve looks like. It's going to be an accelerated growth, okay? Sequence B is one that might throw you for a little bit of a curveball here. And you really got to you really got to ask yourself what what what's happening okay i notice and again i i did this ahead of time i notice that we're not growing by the same thing what i mean is we start with nine and we go to to 36 for the next term that's uh, uh we grew by 27 if i'm adding and then to go from 36 to 81 well that's you know 45 like that huh that doesn't that's not the same, so this can't be arithmetic. All right, well, maybe it's geometric then. 9 times 4, I know that. That's 36, right? So I, I, maybe I'm multiplying by 4. So then what's 36 times 4? It's not 81. 36 times 2 and a quarter, 2.25. Huh. That's 81. So the question is, what in the heck do we have here? Like, what do we, what do we call this thing? All right, and I think maybe by the time we're done talking about it today, we're going to have maybe a good idea. Okay, so we've got our, 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 three, um, our three patterns here, and I do want to look at this in our Desmos e-tool. And this e-tool is pretty easy to use. Um, I've got our, our sequences um, in the e-tool, and the only thing I had to do was um, type those in for the... Uh, the the graphs to be made, right? I just went ahead and populated those. Like, here's what I mean. For example, I could delete that and then the dot will disappear off the graph. But I know that that was 144. So I could punch it back in and it will show back up, right? Okay. And now look at what we have, right? As we predicted, here's my arithmetic sequence. That is that linear piece. As we predicted, here was that curve from our um, geometric sequence, right? And, and we started to toss around um, language in our live lessons like exponential, right? We're starting to see that exponential growth. The growth is speeding up, which is why it doesn't continue at a constant rate. It's accelerating, okay? But this, this thing that we got here in red, this sequence B, the one right in the middle, that's the one that's looking a bit fishy. I, I mean, I, I suppose it's curvy like the exponential one, but is it actually exponential? And that's kind of what we want to investigate, right? That's one of our things that we want to investigate today. I'm going to go back to some of our talking points and our discussion points, but I am real quick going to mark these things down in my notes. We had a bit of a line here in the arithmetic. As predicted, we saw a bit of an exponential curve in the geometric and then this thing that we're not too sure of in the middle it kind of looked exponential but i'm not 100 percent sure it looked like maybe it it could have been um something slightly different because it wasn't the same um shape as the, the the purple line right so so not totally sure there okay um we talked about the inputs and the outputs increasing um which family of, of functions um just looking at this last one here um best models each sequence and and we're not 100 percent sure on that middle one but maybe by the the time we're done today maybe we got a good description for it okay i'm going to move on to the next question because the next question is going to build on what we just did there in number 82 okay um Sequence A, sequence B, and sequence C are on here. And again, we're going to be utilizing a Desmos e-tool. So have that e-book open for your benefit here. Consider how fast each of the segments, um, excuse me, sequences is growing by um, looking at the tables on the and the graph. Do not make any additional computations. I'm going to have to fight to not do that. But instead, we're going to make some guesses, right? Conjecture is just a fancy word for the guess. Okay? If N represents the number of years and T of N represents the amount of money in your savings account, which account would you want? Sequence A, B, or C? Well, let's real quick agree that when it comes to saving money, we prefer the account with the most money at the end, right? At the end of, uh, uh, at the, end of the, the, the model, right? Um, would your answer change if you kept the account for many, many years? That's part B. And then we're going to use for C the... Um, 583 e-tool 
uh, to, to go ahead and help us um, figure this out. And then we'll look at whether or not we want to change our answer. So real quick, if N represents the number of years and T of N represents the amount of money in the savings account, which account would you want? Sequence A, B, or C? Well, I'm just going to go back to my, um, my e-tool from 82. And right now, the amount of money that's the largest comes from this red line, right? It's the highest one up. And that's that's model B, right? This is the amount of money in my, my savings account. I'm going to go ahead and just say, well, right now, it looks like after, you know, four years, we want model B, right? Because that, that gives me the most money, okay? But the question is, would you change your answer if we kept the account for many, many years? You know, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know if I have enough information. Right now, it looks like this one's going to beat A, but is it going to continue to beat model C or the purple line? I just don't know. I don't have enough information quite yet. So that's where we are going to want to say, well, for right now, we're going to keep model B, but we're going to go ahead and, and look at some more data. Okay, and that's where the e-tool for 83 comes in, 5-83 student e-tool. And I just am going to find this one on my um, uh, CPM ebook. I would click right here, and it pulls up something that looks like this. Now, check this out, ladies and gents. We've got this, and it's filled in just like you see it right here as soon as I click on it, right? And wow, look at that performance, right? It, it tells me right here after seven years, I've got $441. Well, let's keep this going. If I keep adding 27, 108 plus 27, what's that work out to be? 135 plus 27 works out to be uh, 162 plus 27 works out to be 189, right? Doing pretty gosh darn well. But you know what? It still doesn't beat B. But let's keep going here. If I double this, I get 96. If I double 96, I get 192. If I double 192, what do I get? Well, 380. Four. Wow, look at that. Okay, look at how sharply that looks like it's starting to increase. Okay, what do you think is going to happen after one more year? Man, this thing looks like it's starting to increase at a much greater rate. I think the purple one might catch the red one. And that's what we we want to start to kind of formulate here. If we only get to see the red line, well, yeah, then it looks like B is really gosh darn good. However, once we start to fill in that exponential model, then ladies and gents, that purple line looks like it's going to start to catch that red line pretty quickly. So yeah, if I had to keep this thing for many, many, many years, I'd change to sequence C because sequence C is very, very, oh, I realize my, my picture's coming that up, covering on that up there. All right, sequence C is gonna grow very, very, quickly and catch sequence B. All right, then the last thing we're going to investigate here is what's given to us in, in 84. Um, this kind of says in 84, hey, will the exponential um, account eventually contain more money than the linear account? Uh, will sequence C uh, contain more eventually than, than sequence A, of course, right? Sequence A, the linear growth, really just didn't stand a chance, okay? Um, no matter how long we carry that out for, it does not matter, okay? And then in part B here, we would find um, a, a little bit of an answer to what we call that sequence B, right? That's a quadratic model. And that quadratic model, as we saw there, by what we presume would be the eighth year, would get caught by our exponential model, right? They're both growing and that, that growth rate isn't constant, but it would get caught by sequence C. All right, folks, a little bit of review preview here at the end. Give these things a shot because they're going to help us identify some of the questions we have. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.